what's happening to me. What if she finds out? When Teen Wolf premiered in 2011, the real world was awash with battles for inclusion and acceptance. The push for marriage equality in the U.S. was still four years from a Supreme Court intervention. The specter of voting rights issues, especially in communities of color, still loomed large with measures that many believed would discourage or restrict voter turnout. The topic of inclusion was on the precipice of becoming far more nuanced and controversial. And while we didn't know it at the time, we were already slouching toward a state of widespread rancor and divisiveness. But back then, Teen Wolf came in with a utopian portrayal of a universally accepting society where racial, sexual, and other common prejudices were nearly non-existent. Get up. I never asked Danny to get up because I don't stare at his girlfriend's coin slot. And that lasted for five and a half seasons, this vision of what the world might one day become. But then we met the Anukate, which turned unreasonable fear into a violent backlash against the different and the unknown. And that nearly destroyed everything. We keep that current of electricity coursing through him because otherwise he'd rip through his bindings, he'd break free and kill us. Let's start with you. In its final 10 episodes, Teen Wolf dramatized a real world phenomenon. We've seen it again and again. Rapid social progress is often opposed by a visceral and sometimes violent rejection from individuals who do not want to change. Looking back now at season 6B, you could view that entire segment as a warning of what's to come in America. In the American South, post-Civil War reconstruction ends in 1877, leading to the rise of Jim Crow laws designed to divide communities by race. Attempts to reverse these backwards practices in the mid 20th century results in violent backlash, murder, and terrorism. Uh, I thought you liked girls. I do like girls. Do you? Absolutely. Great. So you also like boys? Absolutely. Do you? I, I like you a lot. You're incredibly good-looking and smart and sweet. I just don't think I can do it. Do you? Werewolves. We got plenty of supernatural threats but Beacon Hills was basically a paradise for marginalized groups. But in those final 10 episodes, producers decided to let a serpent into this sociological Garden of Eden. It's an ancient shapeshifter. It can turn neighbor against neighbor, sowing the seeds of discord and hate. It, it doesn't need fangs, it doesn't need claws. It uses something far more sinister. Fear. Yes, when paranoia turns to anger, anger turns to violence, entire communities tear themselves apart. The Anukate emerged and introduced hate and bigotry into a universe that once seemed impervious to these things. From 1918 to 1933, the Weimar Republic era in Germany was an attempt at true equality for all people. It saw true racial and ethnic inclusion codified in law, and the rise of Europe's largest and most successful homosexual movement. All these advancements in inclusion are reversed within a decade after Hitler's rise to power in 1933, and millions are murdered due to their race or sexuality. The progress of the 1920s was never truly recaptured even after the defeat of Nazism, Gay marriage wasn't legalized in Germany until 2017 and systemic racism remains a problem. You've seen them up close. There was a lacrosse game. We got trapped in the library. All we could do was hide. I did the same thing until I got tired of hiding. Tired of being afraid. 
And I decided it's their turn to be afraid. The Inukate plotline serves as a stark reminder. Even as our country progresses toward a fully inclusive and accepting ideal, underlying fears still threaten to reverse all of the gains we've seen. Negative societal backlash in the face of progress is a recurrent theme in Western politics. We saw it throughout the middle of the last century. As African Americans came closer and closer to achieving federal civil rights protections, the fierce opposition became increasingly hateful, increasingly vocal, and increasingly violent. The achievement of marriage equality through constitutional ruling in 2015 emboldened the push for greater inclusion for all LGBTQ plus individuals at all levels of society. And while most Americans now support equality in marriage, employment, and almost all other aspects of public life, a growing number of Americans are not ready to go any further. The more nuanced issues, like gender identity, remain very contentious. And for many of those in the opposition, the speed and the thoroughness of official acceptance in local public schools, all levels of government, and within private corporations has resulted in a huge fear-based backlash. Iran's so-called White Revolution of 1963 began a rapid period of westernization and modernization specifically for women who were given the right to vote and hold public office for the first time. This was met with violent revolution in 1979. One of the first acts of the new conservative government was to strip women of their hard-won rights and reverse decades of progress. Our current society has reached a tipping point when it comes to acceptance of substantive change. History shows that societal progress often comes in waves. We get periods of rapid advancement followed by re-entrenchment. Striking the right balance in how change is implemented and communicated is crucial to ensure that the progress is sustainable and it doesn't inadvertently push society in an opposite and more regressive direction. Okay, I'll step down off that particular soapbox and wrap this up. Teen Wolf's final act serves as a warning. Progress, as witnessed in our real world's push for universal equality, is neither linear nor guaranteed. We have to remain vigilant. We have to be fully aware that these latent prejudices still exist and that unreasonable fear can easily ignite and manipulate them toward violence.